Hey there, NJ, Route22.com, back here again with another Cheap Wine Reviews vlog. And today, it's like 29 degrees. I'm gonna wear a little vest. I feel like Mr. Frickin' Rogers. Yeah, I'm gonna wear a stupid ass sweater. I'm wearing a vest. I, I don't know where I found this. It's way too big for me. But anyway, tonight, tonight, today, we're talking about the Cape Original, or Cape Original Shiraz from uh, the Cape Academy Library. It's an Australian wine, I think. If you could see it, there it is. I hope you could see it. If not, I, I, I just need to get a better camera and better lens. This is an expensive camera and lens, but it's uh, 2005. It doesn't have like auto focus. So I'm gonna crack open bottle number two here. This is gonna be a one take, one, video uh, so this is that's about uh, I, don't know, uh, I don't know quarter of a, a bottle I'm gonna suck it down a little bit I'm gonna talk a little bit about it in a minute ah, that was that was a monstrous uh, satisfying uh, I'm gonna water, make it a little bit thicker here it's having too much water so that's like a third of a bottle I just uh, poured in there tonight for that this particular glass. This is a 2017 Shiraz. I got it Wegmans, you know, if you're one of their members of their stupid fruity shopping card. It's a six dollar bottle. It's sort of like the two buck chuck way back 20 years ago at Trader Joe's that you know went up with the economy. Two buck, three buck, whatever. I don't even know what it is anymore. It's like five buck chuck. I don't really like Trader Joe's um, as much as most people do. Um, but this is a 2017 vintage. They're on the 2018 now. I don't give a crap. Uh, it's a 14%, which is uh, our made up in our mind uh, uh, level. I mean, I've had 12% that, that have been very good. Saddlebred Cellars was one of those. It was a Pinot Noir, which I don't normally drink, which was surprisingly good. Um, I'm looking for a napkin here or a rag because I've got wine on my homemade workbench here. Um, I have like a bunch of these workbench. Angle irons and, and uh, two by fours and, and plywood and some wheels and you have solid made in America, um, made in wherever town you live in. Anyway, I'm, I ramble. I'm gonna try not to ramble, I'll keep you there under 10 minutes. But this, uh, this is a $6 wine at uh, Wegmans. Um, I don't know if any other people have it, but there's something important to note. This is imported from a company called Monsieur Touton. I think the website is M Touton, M T O U T O N dot, I'm not sure, org.com dot edu dot eu, I, I don't know. But we've noticed in the past few weeks or months uh, that wines coming out of this importer have been extremely affordable. You know, the $5.99 range, $6.99 range, and they've all been good. Good enough to, to say they taste good, and several of them have passed the two bottle test for us. You know, we're, we're burly and uh, whatever. Remember, I have to remind everybody, a two bottle test for me is a one and a half bottle test for somebody else, a one bottle test for another person, and a half a bottle test. The, the test I speak of is in regards to how many bottles can you drink where you know that a good wine, you, you, you don't feel like crap, and a bad wine you do. But you have to like drink, like, like for us, three bottles of any wine, it could be the, a $300 bottle of wine, three, three bottles of that, and we're gonna feel like crap. Whereas, I can safely say that if I drink one bottle only of anything, it could be the worst wine in the world, box wine, it could be the shooty, no, the, the worst wine ever, and I will not feel like crap the next day. That's the key. So I, I try to find my, my limit in the sky where I know that if, it, if it's bad after that point, it's, it's a bad wine. If it's good after that point, it's good wine. Uh, I think I may lower mine to like a one and three quarter bottle limit or even one and a half. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm on the fence here. It, it, it's between one and two bottles, let's just put it that way. It's definitely not one. I can drink one of anything and feel like a champ the next day. Anything, almost anything. Maybe the $2 wine, I might feel crappy, but I doubt it because it's just impossible because of my physical size. 
Anyway, this Monsieur Touton importer, look look out there. I, I don't think it's gonna show up too good, but try. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll focus. Maybe it'll focus. Maybe it'll focus. But look for that logo on the bottom. You can get the shape of it, even if it's not in focus. Um, that Monsieur Touton is, is, we've had extremely good luck and we're finding them everywhere now. I don't know what, what has caused this phenomenon of seeing this wine everywhere in the last two or three months. But uh, and it's not just South African wines, they're all over the place. Chile, they have wine um, sources from all over the world. I, mean, I think it's like 40 countries. But uh, this is it. This is so far so good. I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I might tell you in, in the, in the write-up on my YouTube or in the uh, njroot22.com vlog um, whether it passed the test or not. I mean, some, I guess the purpose of these videos to get time and page views and clicks is to wait till the end to tell you, I'm not gonna do that. You can read ahead of time if it passed, but if you wanna know more about this wine. I want to say one thing, this is, this is the meat of the story here. I looked up, you know, obviously you look up on the Google brain or whatever it is. Mm. Utterly refreshing. And maybe every wine is utterly refreshing, that's not true. But when you water it down with ice cold water and a straw in a big mason jar, it's possible that everything is refreshing. That's not true. We've had we've had wines that were not were not uh, refreshing or good, and we've had eh wines. It's not too often, but most wines pass this ah, test. Um, but I read some reviews, and, and I hate reviews. I really, 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 really despise reviews, and I don't ever, ever, ever follow them. I, I look at them almost as like a like a bird on a perch 30,000 feet above the mountain looking down and, and seeing what these these like minions are doing down there. You, you get some people who talk and they're all snooty. Oh, this wasn't this wasn't good and this this had a peppery if, uh, notes and but uh, it wasn't the texture on the tongue and and all this other nonsense. Like I water my stuff down and I already told you guys I've tasted some wines that did, when you watered them down, they got so like ridiculously like weak that you felt like you were drinking some sort of tainted uh, uh, cup that wasn't washed in the diner. Um, I guess there is, there. if you look at a bell curve, you know, the bell curve has like I think 90 or 80 to 90% of the stuff is pretty good within the bell curve. Um, and then you get those fringe that are that are really either exceptionally amazing, like two one one or two percent, and then you get the one or two or five percent that are exceptionally bad. The bell curve is most of the stuff you'll see available at a store because their wine buyers are will will get rid of the, the bottom five percent of the bell curve, and then they'll put their one percent in that hundred dollar uh, special cabinet, whatever they think, whatever. But you get this bell curve, but the bell curve is is the same for people's tastes. Because you'll have a percentage of the population that follows, I guess, the status quo, and, and they're in the, whatever, middle 20%, 25% of the bell curve, where it's the top. And then you get some people that say, oh, it was too watery, I didn't like the texture, and other people in that same bell curve will say, oh, it was great. So that those are the difference between a, you know, the three star, two and a half star. Some will say, oh, I liked it, I, I finished it, I won't buy it again, it was an okay value for six dollars. To other people say, hey, it's undervalued, I really like it. So it's just personal opinion. And, and our personal opinion here is probably the same. Because if I say it's, it's a good two bottle wine, watered down, um, you might not agree with me, which is which is all fine. That's why I don't pay any attention to these reviews. If it gets 90 points or 95 points by some, what's that guy's name? James Sickhead or whatever, Sickler Suckler, what, what, I don't even know what his name is, but he's apparently well regarded and his tongue is so special. How, how is his tongue special? If it's not the same as mine, it's not special at all, okay? This is why I think you need to just throw those wine magazines in the garbage cancel the subscription and just try it on your own. It's so much more fun to try it on your own and decide. 
It's not like, I guarantee you if this James Suckler or whatever his stupid ass name is, says it's good, I would say 90% of the people that read and admire these people are gonna like it because he said so. Maybe it's 80%, maybe it's 50%, I don't know. But they'll like it in an artificial way because someone said, and that adds into their brain that they should like it. And they drink it and they convince themselves for some weird reason that they like it. That's the oddity of it. Like I love buying stuff just on my own and deciding if on my own, if I like it. And if, let's just say I want to entertain and compare my stupid opinion to someone else's stupid opinion and James Suckler or Sickler or Sickling, what is his name? Can someone tell me? I'll, I'll, maybe I'll put it in the comments. But he didn't, he, he would never touch this with a 10 foot pole because it's well beneath him. Really? You're a human being just like me. What elevated you to this status where you, you were unable to drink this? You know, what are you going to collapse and die? What if, I bet you if I told James Suckling or Sickling, whatever his name is, um, that this was a $200 bottle of wine and, and he would drink it and love it. And that, that's how it works. And I think I've mentioned this like countless times already on this uh, vlog, but so far after a bottle and a half of this uh, Cape Original, Original, or whatever it is, It's a great wine for six bucks. It's a, so it comes out to a $12 plus tax for a 1.5. I still miss my uh, $10 and nine cent, um, what was that? Uh, whatever that wine I bought, they changed the uh, percentage. It sucks that I forgot. Um, Rex Goliath, it was, it was 20, 30% less now, 20, about 20% 20 less than buying two of these cheapo bottles, and it was really good. I, I, I loved it. The 13.5 was, was the bomb, and they ruined it, 13.0, and I can no longer get that super duper affordable. But there's another wine from this uh, importer. We've, we've reviewed a couple already from this place. Uh, I forget which one else we did, but um, there'll be another one coming up next week or the week after that's, uh, I get it even cheaper. It's like $5 and change over at ShopRite Wine and Liquor or Wine and Spirits or Spirits and Wine or Wine and Beer, whatever it's called. And I think it's right around the same, um, I mean, I this is my first time drinking this, so I didn't put it, vet it through its uh, process to make sure I didn't feel like crap the next day. My liver, my liver depends on how much I've consumed in the past few weeks or so. I have no idea what the time is. 13 minutes. I, I've gone way, way too long here. But what I'm trying to say is I think this, uh, this Cape Original, don't pay attention to the reviews you see on these stupid websites where you get a whole range of reviews and you can't really figure out. Don't bother. It's $6. It's 14%. It's a screw top, which means it's not going to be tainted. It's going to be relatively consistent across every bottle you drink, and I think it's a fine wine. Um, I haven't tasted it straight up. I don't have a glass here. Uh, I, don't want, I do have a glass here, but it's been sitting in the garage for a long time. I don't care. I'm going to taste it this way just for a second. Hmm. I taste sawdust and dead bugs. Hey, it had notes of sawdust and dead bugs. No. Now that I rinse it out, I'm going to try another sip. I agree that some of the people said it had different texture. Yes, I guess some wines are very complex and, and they're very complicated on your tongue. I don't know why anybody would put that much emphasis on, on this, this, this taste you get. Like how much analysis, how much micromanaging of your tongue can you do? I would break it up into, into, into two zones. This, this is a smooth kind of like a velvety, no, no, I don't want to say velvety. It's smooth like Teflon. It, it doesn't really have any texture. It doesn't feel like there's angry pieces of sand grabbing my tongue and, and, and talking to me. Oh man, this is my taste, listen to me. No, this doesn't have any of that 
that sandy or whatever, a sandpaper like like you're drinking a rug. You know, I, I drank wines like that, or consumed wines like that, where it has texture. You know, like, who needs to spend that much time analyzing? It's just different. This is re more refreshing, I think, to drink. And some people may sip it like this. Watch, you sip it like this. If I drank my wine like an idiot like that, I would say that this thing just vanished from my tongue. It went down my throat and it's in my belly getting processed into buzz credits from my brain. The people that need to sip, sit there and sip like, like a one milliliter sip like this, how, how little can you sip? It took me a week to drink a, a glass of wine. Oh, no, 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 my God, what are you gonna do, right? Like chapters of a, like some sort of romance novel every time you drink a, a milliliter of wine, oh, no. I love saying that, no, no. This, this wine fits, I would, I would bring this to a BYOB, and drink it straight up with my steak and uh, whatever else I get with the steak. I would probably get, because uh, I don't eat carbs, I would get like a steak and, uh, like some bacon and some like a vat of butter to dip it in. But a normal one ounce sip or half an ounce sip, I don't think it's texture free. It, it's not that liquidy. A lot of these reviewers say, oh, it doesn't have texture, but I give it a good review anyway. That just proves to you it doesn't really matter. Like some, why would you give one wine just because it has a carpet like texture and you feel it like, like, fighting a battle on your tongue. It's just a different way of drinking. Yes, some wines are, are more interesting, but I don't think that makes or breaks whether a wine is good or bad. Everything is, is has its thing, you know? Like you might like a thin crust pizza. I don't eat carbs. A thin crust pizza one day, and one day you might be craving one of those stupid deep dish pizzas with the stuffed crust and like, dipped in a deep fryer and like, I don't know. Everybody, you, your mood changes from day to day. And this, this is inoffensive, and which is a very popular way to say things these days. It's inoffensive. You can't get offended by it. And this is why people don't say, oh, it sucks. It doesn't suck. It, it truly doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. It can't suck. So you can't give it a bad review. And like, like when you start getting into these Comparing, if, if I, I, I've already drank like 500 different brands of wine in my life, maybe more. Like at what given point in time, like how can you slice beans and slice split hairs, as they say, that's the difference between one thing. And guess what, after you're done splitting all those uh, wines, they're done forever because the vintage is over. And there's like 10 bottles left in some dope cellar somewhere that are probably going bad as you speak. It's just a little slice in time and you just, what I like to do is I, I pick up many bottles. I'll buy this bottle. I bought a bottle of Italian wine at the Wegmans in Hanover um, tonight just to try it. I don't even know what it's called, what the, what the grape type is. Uh, apparently my significant other, she said, that uh, she hates Italian wines because they're florally. And I read this, this one doesn't have, uh, this one does have a, a write-up. It's saying uh, about 2.5 million years ago. <laughs> it matters to anybody. Um, she said it had a, a flowery thing. And I read, I read the bottle of this stupid Italian wine and it said it had a bouquet finish. So I may not like it. I don't know if I like flowery stuff. But either way, this, uh, this Cape original does is not as bad straight up as some of the other wines I've had. I think there were, I, forget, I think this, I forget which one it was that, I mean, maybe it was the Saddlebred or something else that had a, a bad watered down because it was so weak to begin with that it was super duper weak. It almost felt like, like backwash in, in, in my, my style of drinking. But uh, this is fine straight up. Even in a wine glass, it's been sitting in my garage with like beetles and, and like all sorts of centipedes. I'm gonna keep that there. Maybe that'll be my new thing. Drink out of the, the bottle, the, the glass that's uh, been there forever. 
But I, I like this wine. Um, like I said, I'll put in in the blog post or the comments of the um, or the uh, description of the YouTube video whether I felt rotten. I don't think I'm gonna feel rotten. By the way, I'm gonna put a quick footnote here. I, I, Twenty minutes. Holy f and f. It should, it should be it should be five minutes, but. Since I don't um, script these things and, and my thoughts change and the new thoughts that come in, I have to keep it 20, 20 30 minutes. It has to be. <clears throat> I wanted to add one real quick uh, little side note here. This is unrelated to the Cape original. So something I've discovered. Remember I, I was, I was uh, talking about the spiked seltzers. I'm gonna have more, I, I'm, I'm on a roll tonight. I, I don't have any water to add to it, I don't have any alkaline water, so I'm just gonna fill that up all the way. Fucking fill it, and I'll just fill the top with water later. This is drinking while vlogging, FYI. Ding, ding, hashtag, whatever that means. Hashtags are the dumbest freaking thing ever. How people socialize these days um, digitally is, Redonkulous, and they, they get their five minutes in fame a day or two, and they're hot, and then they're nothing. They're, there's something else that overcomes them. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the spiked seltzers. Something interesting has taken place. Uh, we we reviewed these spiked seltzers because we just wanted to just talk about it. We reviewed a couple, and we talked about Truly. We talked about. One other brand, and I think uh, uh, Smirnoff, uh, Spiked Sparkling Seltzer, it was very hard to say. But, I have to give a little bit more credit to uh, Smirnoff Spiked Sparkling Seltzer. While I don't like, I drank it three or four days in a row, I didn't drink a lot, I didn't drink nearly, I, it was hard, let's put it this way, this is my, my average uh, wine drinking on a, on a Good stream. Let's say during the summer I'll drink at least two bottles, boom, 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 everything's fine. Something amazing happened with the, the spiked uh, sparkling seltzer. The 12 pack of that wine is equivalent in alcohol to about two bottles of wine. And what I found was lately that in the last two weeks that I could be fine drinking nine cans. I drank nine cans one night, nine cans the next night. I didn't, I got tired, you know, I got, because since I watered down that too as well, even more so than this, it was just a refreshing drink. It was a nice slow way to get a buzz and enjoy the end of your work day. I got to the point where I was drinking like five or four cans of this spiked sparkling seltzer and it was enough for me to, I didn't want any more to drink. So four cans of spiked sparkling scent seltzers is the equivalent in alcohol to about um, six, it was about a little bit less than like two thirds of a bottle of wine. So it's like 16 bucks, 17 bucks, 20, depending on where you go. It was it, it equal about it was equal or less than a bottle of wine in cost, and you didn't the alcohol content. If you only drink this much wine, it's pretty good on your liver. And I have to say that that some of you might want to if if you drink two bottles of wine a night like me, and you're like, oh my god, what I'm worried about what's going to happen to me. You might want to try the, some of those uh, spiked sparkling seltzers, and I highly recommend you water them down because A, they're super duper refreshing. You find the flavor you like, and they cost more when you buy the flavors alone. So buy the mixed pack and deal with the dis displeasant flavors for a little bit, or unpleasant flavors. Um, get, I drink those first, and it's the easy way to get, get it over with. I, I don't like the cranberry lime. My buddy Curtis at the uh, ShopRite Liquors likes that the best. Um, and the rest of them are pretty much equal, I've determined. The, the cranberry lime is my least favorite. And the rest, uh, I think there was watermelon. Watermelon is the least, second least favorite. But the rosé and the uh, raspberry lemonade are, are the two good ones. 
But you, you can actually drink four or five cans of this stuff, this 12 ounce uh, fake beer, whatever it is, and it's actually pretty damn good. Um, like pain-wise, next day, it, it's it's truly a reliable way to to get a buzz, fall asleep, have a good time, and and not suffer. And I, like I'm probably gonna suffer tomorrow, but I, I will put it in the comments. I'm not gonna do a, a, a uh, tomorrow morning. Hey, look at me! I feel like shit. No, I'm not doing that. But this is a potent. This is almost like 90% alcohol, so 90% wine. So I'm gonna add another 20%, 30% to it. And that's it. But uh, I highly recommend this. It's cheap. It's at Wegmans. If it's anywhere else, I will put it, if it's after I publish this, I will put it in the comments or I will put it in the description. Um, but $6 a bottle, not bad. Thumbs up and have a good night. Stay warm. I think we're having a big winter, by the way. Because my uh, snow equipment's not ready. That's a, a big sign. Take care. 5njroot22.com viewer.